Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. You're watching The Brown Feminist. So today I'm excited to be telling you guys a little bit about my job at McGill University. So this is how I got right out of school and got a pretty nice job doing really important research as a clinical research assistant at McGill University. So working for a research institute and doing research was not always my first choice. I always thought of myself as doing more of clinical trials, working with either pharmaceutical companies on drug trials or clinical research organizations, but doing clinical research with a prominent academic institution like McGill has its perks. So let me tell you a little bit about what these are. Number one is the money. So because of the reputation of McGill, they do have a set minimum below which no professor or no research um, coordinator can actually offer you a job. And their lower end, their very minimum actually ranges around $55,000 a year for a full-time clinical research assistant. So that's a pretty good spot to start off as. And then depending on how experienced you are, it can go up to 65, 75, even up to 82 to 85 range. So because I had a lot of experience coming in, my salary was um, rated accordingly and my compensation package was determined. So let's go on to number two. It's extremely good work-life balance. So I myself, I'm from Ontario and I didn't really have experience with really good number of paid vacation days and all of this stuff. I'm not sure if it is simply because I'm in Quebec or if it is because of the kind of institution I'm working for, if it's the union, but my current um, paid vacation days and I'm just in my first year of work and it's been about more than three weeks, around three and a half weeks of paid vacation time. On top of that, you have all of your stat holidays. On top of that, you can take medical leave if anything happens, God forbid. On top of that, you have some additional days um, between Christmas and New Year's. And then the cherry on top of the cake is that you can take every Friday off in the summer. So basically you're down to a four day work week with three days off during the summer months. And that was just incredible. I'd never experienced something like this. And it actually helped make all of us a lot more uh, productive and efficient with the time that we were at work. And honestly, sometimes I just chose not to take that Friday off, but knowing that I had the opportunity to reduced a lot of the stress and increased productivity like crazy. So number three, now this is a benefit and a harm, however you want to look at it. So when you are working in a different province, for example, I am now in Quebec, salary is good. The cost of living is actually pretty low. Rent is very cheap. You can get like a fabulous one bedroom apartment for like $1,000 or $1,200 in a nice neighborhood with like a lot of room and great finishings. Having said that, the income tax is actually a little bit higher in this province. So it is significantly higher from what I had to pay in Ontario for the same salary bracket. So these are some things that you might want to consider um, before you decide to like change your state, change your province and go for a job. But as far as an ac academic institution goes, um, them offering you a significant salary bump or other benefits usually outweighs your little bump in income tax. And usually provinces with higher income taxes are going to give you back the benefits in some other ways, whether it's through infrastructure, health and other stuff. Number four is the amazing campus. So I'm sure you know that when you're working at an academic institute, you really have access to the whole campus environment. Beautiful old buildings, lots of room, park spaces to go for walks on, access to like the gym or the campus library and other benefits like that. Staff have a lot of excellent access as well. Um, that's not always true when you're not working in an academic research institution, but you're rather working for like a more privatized company or um, like um, a pharmaceutical company or a CRO. It's usually more like tight office spaces. Um, so I've really been enjoying taking these walks, enjoying like being surrounded by future minds of tomorrow, but also by like PhD students, grad students, professors, deans, 
it's a very nice and academic environment both intellectually and just the physical space of it you're seeing all of this great stuff happening like cultural events going on and activism happening all of that lively young fresh educated stuff is happening right in front of you so that's one more reason that i think working in an academic research institute has been a bonus number five is your work-life balance now this might highly depend on the faculty you're working for and the immediate supervisor or team that you're working with but in general academic research institutions work on projects based off of grants and usually the grants have a limited amount of work that you need to do Sometimes that work needs to be done before a deadline, whether you have like a, a submission, a grant due, a research ethics application due, or you have to um, like meet some kind of a deadline before a conference. So those things are obviously still there. You still need to do your fair share of work and there will be peaks when um, you need to speed it up a little and take on some more load. But in general, unlike other research organizations I've worked with where you have multiple projects going on and any minute that you're not working is counted like as lost human hours for this profit-oriented organization. But in an academic research environment, what I have felt over the last four or five years is that as long as you are really on top of your project, as long as all of your you know, immediate duties are done, you do have a little bit of flexibility of when you can either do some reading and just be updated on what other people in your field are doing. And like more casual work hours, you can also like take time off. Sometimes I have a very flexible work environment and um, work-life balance. So there'll be times that on the weekend, I'll do a little bit of work to get ahead and make sure I meet my deadline on Monday. But at the other times, I can have like an early end to my Friday because most of my meetings are done and my tasks for the week are done and I can use that time for some self-development professional development I can do some readings I can do something else that'll help me de-stress and there isn't a go 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 attitude unless there is an immediate project need so that has really helped me and my immediate peers and my superiors all to have a very healthy relationship. It's usually not a stressful relationship. There are obviously reminders like, hey, that's due on that day and you might need to um, adjust your schedule accordingly. But having the flexibility that when there is no work, no one is just on your neck to create work for you um, as long as your role is being done in an excellent way that that is itself um, a pretty big blessing when you're working in research um, at the same time it I'm sure does vary with supervisors and I've been very blessed to have really great supervisors who really trust my independence and in working. Sometimes that motivates me to do work much faster. Somebody else might take eight hours to do something and I'll take three hours. Sometimes it's just coming up with ideas and you can't put a time bracket on that. And if you come up with excellent ideas in 10 minutes and some of them um, can really help speed up the project or streamline processes, then there is no price on that. That's a price of talent. And that actually helps you buy some extra free hours of the day for your own self, for your self-care or your personal professional development. You doing a course or you doing extra readings or you just taking some time off to relax. So this work-life balance has been excellent at McGill, um, especially like the summer um, four-day work week I was telling you about, being able to go out and enjoy that additional day, maybe on the beach, maybe taking walks, or just doing something else you like, actually helps make you way more productive on the other days. And that's definitely one reason I would um, encourage you all to try out your time at an academic research institute. Now let's talk about how actually you can cater your career to joining an academic research institute. Most typically, most of the roles you will find are academic, which means most of the research assistants and associates are existing students of the institution. You could be an undergrad, a master student, a PhD student, and you would be getting a lot of these roles. Um, and then the other roles in a typical educational institute would be that in academia, which means you would be like a lecturer, an associate or assistant professor, a professor, things like that. But there is a way for you to get in purely based on research. It is a little bit more competitive when you are not a student or an alumni of that organization, when you're not an existing um, academic staff of that organization. 
So that's exactly what I did. I never went to school at McGill, but I did get a full-time good stable job at McGill and it's been excellent because I'm being able to do research on COVID, which has been my passion since COVID became a world-based pandemic, killing so many people. And I know that this was the way that I wanted to contribute. So how to do it is to be extremely competitive in your application process. So one thing you have to remember is you are competing with students or fresh grads from that school who might already have like a network with that faculty, with the professors, with the staff. So you are basically competing with that pool who is already familiar to them, whose education is probably like more familiar to the um, recruiters, the hiring team. And you are going against all of that. So you really have to bring your A game. And what you can do for that is really put in time to customize your application. I know this can be very frustrating. I know you could apply to hundreds of jobs and not hear back, but trust me, I made it a habit of applying to 30 jobs on the weekends or 20 jobs every weekend. And within a few months, you will get your responses. Um, so for example, one thing that I did when applying to McGill is to really go through the job description and what they needed over and over and over again. Before I went in, I created my profile, take your time, fill in all those extra boxes, even the ones that are not mandatory on their careers page. It is frustrating, you have to do it for every single job, but if you're planning to make a career in this industry, this will be a long-term investment. You can use the same profile over and over again to apply to different positions in that organization. So if this is one of your top five or top 10 organizations that you would like to work in for research, then this is an excellent idea to really put in your time and effort and um, like create a good profile with all of your details Add in your extra attachment, your resumes, your cover letters, your certifications, anything that says that you have the skills that they need. In my case, it was really interesting because they needed a very interesting combination of people who know how to deal with patients, but also have a lot of experience dealing with biological or hazardous samples. And because of my background in a little bit of lab-based stuff, microbiology, immunology, and my background in nursing, I had that exposure to do, do both patient-facing clinical work as well as sample facing, like handling infected blood samples or saliva samples or any kind of tissues and organs. So anything that you think is unique to you that you can sell and that's needed or that seems to be attractive to the recruiter, sell it. Sell it like anything. Spend a whole paragraph in your cover letter talking about that new unique aspect and you will see that it will pay off. So moving on. When you are actually in the process of applying, I know that a cover letter is pretty frustrating to write for every single job, but when it is that dream job that you're applying for, it really does matter that you're customizing it, that you're really not saying to whom it may concern. No, look up the team you're working for, look up the name of the supervisors, look up the name of the research associates or coordinators, name them say that you want to work in their team say that i would love to work in doctor this person's team and nurse that person's team um, because i've seen their work there we are very well aligned Under, let them understand that this isn't just about a job this is about your career well aligning with their objectives and that's why the two of you can benefit each other Right, So you have to sound less like a student, more like a professional. You have to show that you have all of that training and education and you're willing to apply that in a professional environment so they don't have to worry about you. You're not just here to learn, you're also here to deliver. Especially if you're expecting like one of those higher end salaries, it has to sound less that you're still a new person, you're still willing to learn because that's something you've done during your summer RA ships during school. But once you're done school, it's your time to at least 50% of the time you're delivering on your skills that already exist. And the other 50% of the time, you're of course learning and having growth um, by working with the team. But the whole interview cannot be about, I'm eager to learn. It also has to be, I have done this, I have done that, I'm familiar with this, I'm able to deliver that. I have done some 
um, research work. I have an idea of analytics. I've worked with patients or at least with vulnerable populations. I've volunteered there and that's where I've learned how to do a research ethics application or how to write a grant or how to handle money for a research fund or how to order reagents or equipments and other things we might need or how to um, manage a project and support a project and how to really streamline processes and all of that. So you're here, you have your skills, be confident and apply to that job at this amazing research institute. So it's obviously not limited to McGill. There are a lot of really great research institutes across Canada, across North America. A lot of them have really good funding. They get really great funding opportunities through the government um, and on other avenues. Um, my project right now is actually being funded by the COVID-19 Immunity Task Force, which is from the federal government. And that allows us like all the leeway to actually do whatever it takes to get really robust data and really high quality data out of the project because these projects are going to come together one day and the data will help shape policy going forward. So it's really exciting work and an important work and I'm sure you will find a specialty that you will enjoy working in. So I hope this video has been interesting and entertaining for all of you. I've really enjoyed um, sharing about my experiences at McGill and I hope that you guys can also share a little bit about your experiences working for um, other research institutes or research organizations, pharmaceuticals, drug trials or anything like that. I would really want to learn uh, from you as well. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. This is The Brown Feminist.